Hello and welcome to my first micro teaching on the new 9 to 1 GCSE medicine topic. The big question we're looking at today is this one. Medieval people used only supernatural methods to explain and treat poor health. How far do you agree? To tackle that question successfully, we need to work through the stages on the right. I'm just going to quickly run through those now. We need to be able to describe medieval beliefs about disease. We need to be able to describe medieval treatments for poor health. We need to be able to find evidence that both supports and disagrees with this interpretation. Then we need to synthesise those two into our own interpretation and clearly communicate it. We're going to start with evidence that supports the interpretation. In the medieval era, life was dominated by the Christian church, which used to teach that everything that happened on earth happened because God wanted it to. Disease was no exception. If people became ill, they believed it was because God was punishing them for sins that they had committed. The first thing they would do on becoming ill would be to pray. And they would do this not for alleviation of their symptoms, but forgiveness for the sins that God was punishing them for. We also see good examples of this with the Black Death. The Black Death sweeps Europe, no one has any explanation it beyond God's will, and we have flagellants or extremist Christians who believe that God has sent this terrible disease as a punishment because of Europe's misdeeds and sins collectively. In order to atone for this, they walk the streets publicly, flogging themselves in the hope that if God sees that they are torturing themselves for their own sins, well then God will remove the punishment of the Black Death. It's for this reason that we also see rampant anti-Semitism. Jewish people were the only significant non-Christian group living in Europe at this time. And many Christians came to believe that God was angry at Christians for allowing these other religions to live amongst them. Nobody questioned any of this because people believed that if you questioned the church, you were questioning God, which in itself was a sin and would result in you being sent to hell. Hell for people in the medieval period was a real place and they were far more frightened of it than we are today. That might be because medieval people were surrounded by death and didn't live very long, which meant that they were more concerned with what would happen to them after they died than they would be about their life on earth. It's for this reason that medieval hospitals have the characteristics they do. Hospital is taken from the same root word as hospitality, which means to look after guests. And that's pretty much what medieval hospitals did. Monks, and especially nuns, would care for sick people and make them comfortable by offering them good food, warmth and drink. But they would not try to cure that person's disease beyond praying for their sins. And they might even have believed that attempting to cure a, a sick person was a sin because it was trying to remove a punishment that had been sent by God and was his will. So far, all we've looked at is evidence that supports this interpretation, but it would be very unfair to leave it there because there's plenty of evidence that this wasn't true. We're going to look at that now. Along with explaining disease by saying God had sent it, people also used the natural theory of the four humours. This is the belief that inside everybody there are four liquids, black bile, yellow bile, blood and phlegm, and that what causes illness is an imbalance in these. The reason people believed in this natural theory in the medieval period was because of the work of a Roman doctor called Galen, who published this work in books that were extensively, uh, well, extensively passed around the old Roman Empire. In these books, Galen said something that made the church support him. And here it is. He said the human body was so perfect, it must have been designed by God. This makes the church pretty much fall in love with Galen, and they come to believe that Galen is divinely inspired which means they believed that God had given Galen a message to give people directly. This meant that no one would ever dare question this explanation for disease. Universities were controlled by the church in the medieval period, especially towards the beginning of this period, and that meant that all physicians trained at youth universities would have been diagnosing and treating diseases using these four humours. They also had other natural explanations too. They used to use star charts, believing that the natural position of the stars and planets in the sky could affect someone's health. They also used urine charts to try and diagnose which of these humours was out of sorts. And they advised balanced lifestyles, 
telling people that if they lived moderate, restrained lifestyles, which kept their humours balanced, they would be less likely to get ill. Physicians themselves did not really treat people. They would diagnose the disease and then pass you on to one of two other groups. And they're here. We have barber surgeons. Barber surgeons are what they sound like. They're people who cut hair and then using the same tools can perform simple surgery on the outside of the body. Some of this surgery was very effective because in the medieval era, people were fighting many wars, which meant many barber surgeons got good experience at fixing accidents and traumatic injuries. They would use wound men which were diagrams of different wounds on a human body and the best possible surgery to try and sort a particular problem identified. Along with this, they would also conduct bleeding and purging. These were theories, or these were ideas, designed to rebalance humours. Bleeding could be done through a cut and the application of leeches. Uh, purging would be done by giving someone a drug that would make them throw up, thereby relieving them of yellow bile. Others might go to an apothecary. Apothecary is the medieval equivalent of a chemist, and a physician would write down the medicine he recommended, which the patient would then take to one of these places. Some of these medicines were very effective, but were some were little more than magic spells. Before concluding, it's very important to remember that most people who lived in the medieval era were not rich, they were poor. And these treatments here would only have been available to rich people. For poor people, the options were the same as they have been through most of human history. They would go to a woman. This could be a wife, a mother or a sister. And often these women had a really, really good knowledge of medicines and cures that would work because these had been passed down from daughter to daughter to daughter. An example of this might have been the understanding that garlic might settle an unsettled stomach. So we've got our two interpretations. We've got evidence for both. Before finishing, to produce a proper evaluation, we need to synthesise those. And that means creating a new argument which combines elements of both. As long as you can come up with a good reason, it doesn't really matter what that interpretation is. But I've done one here, just to make it clear. I would say that explanations and treatments were mainly natural and less in direct contradiction of Christian teaching, which would mean that I largely disagree with this statement. Thank you very much for listening. There'll be more videos to follow. As they're produced, they'll be announced on Twitter.